this week's been a serious one for you, I'm sure. You've been so patient with this company. Are we testing that patience now? Well, certainly patience has been required uh, for investors for Credit Suisse because on the one hand, you have some very strong basics to their core businesses, the strong private banking franchise, what appeared to be uh, a de-risking of the investment bank. Now, just because you lower risk-weighted assets doesn't mean you've de-risked it. And this is what we're seeing in the, in, in the last few months here, is that risk controls still are not where they should be. I think this has been clearly demonstrated. We, we, there needs to be a stronger culture of risk control at Credit Suisse. I think this is known, but the cleanup should be happening faster than it's happening. And I think one of the things certainly that didn't help was when we had the Spygate scandal of over a year ago and we lost some good people, uh, the CEO, the chief operating officer, um, I think perhaps that, that left a bit of a void. But clearly, in order for the good bits of Credit Suisse to blossom, you need to... Uh, get rid of the, the bad bits, and that's the risk control, which has plagued this company for the better part of a decade. These are people behind this, David, and I can sense in your voice that you are running out of a little bit of patience around certain aspects of the culture of Credit Suisse. In your view, your words, just alluded to it there, it's not changing quickly enough. Who do you hold accountable? Yeah, well, you have to go through the organization and just make sure that there exists and there is in place a culture that does not tolerate sloth and riskiness. And sure, in every activity we take, we have to balance risk versus return. This is the how anyone should think, whether it be an investor, you should, it's a fraction, not just one number. But Credit Suisse has not been getting the return, and evidently there are some deficiencies in risk. Now, having said all that, this can be repaired. We expect it to be repaired. In fact, there's a new chairman starting in about one month's time, uh, coming from Lloyd's, a very, very sound uh, banker who I believe is, will be exactly what this company needs to bring a fresh look and to, in essence, bring a scrub brush through the organization. I think, unfortunately, the current chairman who's been around for over 10 years has been on top of the organization. And we argue that he should have left last year, don't forget. He's been on top of this organization for 10 years and has presided over this. And I only wish the board would have acted sooner in removing him last year. He's got just a few days left, but, you know, the damage is already done. But I do think the strength of the existing franchises with a new set of eyes. I mean, this is, again, long in coming, but uh, Antonio uh, Hortes Osario, who's coming from Lloyd's, I think will be exactly what this organization needs, a fresh look from outside of the Parada plots to clean up the organization. Do you think that needs a new CEO, one that's only recently come on board? Does the CEO of the company still have your confidence, David? Yes, I think it's unfair at this stage to... to um, Put this on Mr. Gottenstein. I mean, he took over less than a year ago, around a year ago. And don't forget, prior to this, he ran the Swiss Universal Bank, which he did extremely, extremely skillfully. And I think he attempted and has been attempted to reorganize Credit Suisse. But, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. And I think at this stage, unless we could see some evidence to the contrary, I think he is the right person to continue to lead the organization. However, I, I think what is needed is this change at the chairmanship, which we are about to see in the next 30 days. Yep. And again, my only regret is I just wish it would have happened a year 